Hi beautiful people, it's your girl Joy Kezia Mosisi aka The Pretty Brainy Wife and I'm so glad that you could make it and make some time for this channel today. I'm so happy to have you. If you're a regular regular, thank you for always coming back. I really truly appreciate you. And if this is your first time here, do click the subscribe button, be a part of the family. I will really, really love to have you here. So today's episode is gonna be a little bit steamy. Mm, yeah, we're talking about the 10 secrets. Huh? of couples that are having a good sex life hmm. let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me well couples are actually having amazing sex lives by the way i know that these are topics that we don't like to touch on we don't like to talk about we make it seem like it's a taboo to bring up these sex kind of stories but if you're a married couple number one sex is godly it is ordained it is a form of worship you should be doing it you should be enjoying it the purpose and plan of god is that you're getting your freak on every single day. So sometimes our sex lives are dysfunctional because we're busy, we're disconnected as couples. Um, we don't have enough information. We fear each other. We don't want to talk about these things and so many other reasons here and there. So the secrets of couples whose sex life is going on well, you need your pen and your paper and you need the willpower to practice, okay? Number one, these couples are not afraid to ask for sex from each other. Boom! Bomb drop! Because the wives don't want to initiate sex. Wives feel like if they initiate sex, they might be taken for being too horny, which makes them too loose. How can you be loose with your own partner, with your own husband? The Bible says that husbands and wives must satisfy each other. You get? You must each satisfy each other's needs. So if your husband is not satisfying your needs, where are you getting your needs met from? Side eye. So I think that it's very important that women take the lead when it comes to initiating sex. Because men are always ready. 100%. As long as he's sleeping with a female in the bed, whether he's attracted to you or not, that body will function. But for us women, we need a bit of emotional well-being, a, a bit of where, you know, we're being understood, we are happy where we are. At end now, we're not taking any medicines that are altering our body pH. There's a lot of stuff that goes on for us women. And if you want your sex life to go well, honestly, as a woman, Get your life together and initiate that sex. Trust me, you'll thank me. Number two, these couples prioritize and plan for regular sex. Now, we've been put in such a society that makes it seem like good sex is, is something like you're going to have it every day, all the time. Or you're going to actually have sex, not even just good sex, but you're going to have sex. That is what we think. But let me tell you, from experience if you don't plan to have that sex you will not have it you'll have a back ache today you'll be ovulating tomorrow you will have a stomach ache the other day the child will have sucked your boobs dry you won't want anyone to touch you you will have a backlog of housework you'll have emotional problems from your maternal family from where you came from your family where you came from your husband will have annoyed you Every single day, there's going to be a reason why you're not emotionally well to be able to have sex with your husband. So if you don't plan and prioritize these things, it's going to be hard. And for me, I used to find it tacky when people would say things like, oh, we have days where we're like, oh, on Tuesday, we must plan to have sex. And I'd be like, oh, I feel like you should just have it spontaneously and everything. Spontaneous is beautiful. When you just got married, you have no responsibilities, you don't have no kids, nothing. You're just enjoying your lives. You can have it at the back of the car. You can stop somewhere in a bush and have it. You can have it in the club while you're seated on top of him. When you have kids and everything else comes in, you need to plan and prioritize the sex. Otherwise, you will not have it. Couples that have a great sex life recognize their differences and timing. There will be days that your husband will not want sex. Some people find it hard to believe. But there are times when your libido is up there and your husband is just having a bad day. Money is scarce. 
he entered a bad deal there's just something wrong and the last thing he wants is to enjoy sex of course he will the natural process will happen okay but it's not the thing that is like top priority married couples you feel me come and help me here i am helping you come and help me and we explain to these newly married that there will be days that your husband will just cuddle and not exactly have sex with you and it's important to recognize those things because let me tell you i have spoken to women whose husbands sometimes are not in the mood for sex and the only thing that can come into their minds is that he's cheating he's having it elsewhere why is it so hard for people to believe that men can live without sex because our bodies okay the male bodies i was saying our because we're all human beings male bodies are designed in such a way that it's almost spontaneous but that does not mean that they lack the ability to have self-control So men are not exactly jumping at every opportunity to have sex. Otherwise, they'll be having sex with any girl they find on the street, any animal, whatever seems to have a hole, they'll be doing it. But because they have the ability to have self-control, we need to understand that they have emotions too. There are times when they're emotionally down. But the men also need to understand that there are times when their wives are up there. Yeah. Some of us have really crazy pregnancy hormones that give us the energy of 2000 men combined so there is that period where the husband now has to understand that these nine months i am going to be on a treadmill because this person i need to be able to satisfy their desires so a couple that's having a great sex life understands that there are differences and their times and seasons and how to navigate and balance them a couple that has a good sex life understands the changes that come with when you have children, when you have a baby. Personally, the things that I never knew change with your body sexually when you have children. My body felt different when I was newly married. It felt different when, you know, I was pregnant. It felt different when I had a baby, when I had my first baby. And it felt different even when I had my second baby. The things that used to turn me on, that don't turn me on anymore. And it's very understandable. But also you need to realize that there are certain adjustments that are going to be made. You know, in terms of positions, in terms of um, arousal points. For instance, breast milk, guys breast milk if that was the part that you as a husband liked the most you're gonna to have to twitch it up a bit and find a new favorite part in the time being because you're not gonna be competing it's gonna be a tough competition so these couples sit down and understand that you know things change a bit we've had a baby so what can we do differently it's not something that's left to chance we're not just trying to navigate the same things that we've been navigating over and over again Okay, but also for vaginal birth moms, there's something that um, some phobia that comes post the baby, and your partner needs to understand that you're not going to be so elated to have sex the first time after you know postpartum. It's going to be a bit difficult, and some people end up with things like vaginismus, where you know the muscles have refused. There's a lot of phobia. You think you're going to tear. You think. You know things are gonna go haywire and husbands need to sit down and really reassure their wives and take it slow and be understanding you know things change after you have the baby that's the truth these couples talk about what is interesting for each other sexually and how to improve it they give sexual reviews okay after a session i don't know why people are always rushing to sleep i don't know why people are always rushing to jump out of bed you, you fi just finished a very nice worship session. I mean, you know, as you're cuddling, like baby, but today, mm -hmm. yeah, I think what we did, we should do it again. Or what, what, or today wasn't so good. What is it? Is your mind in some other place? Are you okay? Maybe to like discuss these things. Baby, today you are a bit dry. 
have you been taking some flu medication but people just don't want to talk about these things but what isn't measured does not get improved how do you know how to do better how do you know what isn't working if you're not talking about these things you can't have a great sex life when you're doing appraisals on it how yeah you're gonna give me a side eye but you need to do these things you need to talk about what makes you tick and what simply refuse it some of you are sitting on the torture of being twisted nipples left right and center because for him in his head he crammed that nipples are an arousal point for you it did not work for you it's not your thing so by the time you're down in the act you're stressed you're tired your nipples are sore but you can't talk you can't say this doesn't work for me why why are you mute couples that are having a great sex life share their fantasies you've seen anything you like it you've you know you've explored something new you've read it somewhere talk about it be like baby there is this position that i saw do you think we should try it it looks like it would be interesting baby there is this thing that i heard the marriage bed by the way is undefiled i know that this question usually comes a lot in my sessions and in my dms on instagram and people are asking things like is it okay for christians to do or is it okay for christians to do a certain position is it okay for friends the bible says that the marriage bed is undefiled and that all of your needs should be met there if something is not disrespectful to your partner if something is something they are comfortable with if it is something that is not dangerous to their health do it by all means if you need to hang your leg on the ceiling do it whatever catches your fantasy whatever catches your fancy do it because there's no other place for you to explore those desires and options except in marriage. I remember um, back then at uni, there was a girl that we knew from a certain circle and she was dating a married man. And this married man was very, very, for lack of a better word, very loud mouthed, okay? So he used to say it so openly that the reason that he is with this girl is for oral because he can't do it with his wife and so a couple of people had asked him you know why can't you do it with your wife and then he's like i can't even table it like to me i feel like as a wife there are things she can't be doing friends friends your wife or your husband is for you to spoil spoil them Sp spoil them the way you like they are yours for keeps don't hold back anything. Otherwise, you're going to go and explore those fantasies with people you're not supposed to be exploring them with. And you're defiling your marriage bed. Couples that have a great sexual life are doing a lot of things more than having sex. They are exploring all the other options of physical love language. They're hugging. They're kissing. They're tapping us. They're, they're holding hands. They're rubbing each other's bodies. I mean, sex is not just the act of getting into bed and diving on top of it. No. There's so many other um, non-sexual actions that you can engage in with your partner such that, you know, by the time you guys are getting down to the act, the chemistry is there. Okay, you're passing in the corridor, still a kiss. You are, you know, at a party, hold hands, you know, you're driving, touch your partner's thigh. There is nothing wrong with doing those non-sexual actions. And sometimes, actually, it's the problem of the guys. Guys think that anytime they need to do those things is because it's supposed to be leading to somewhere. So they will only consider foreplay, like the only time they'll be useful with their hands is when they're doing foreplay because there's an act, you know, that's lead, um, you know, following it. But you see, you need to constantly be touching each other. It is a form of love. You could actually be having the deepest form of argument. But imagine if you're having an argument while you're touching your partner's shoulder, while you're touching, you know, stroking their hand. You're like, baby, I don't like this. Tell me how that argument will not end in bliss. Tell me how you will not make up after that argument. Normalize non-sexual touching. Normalize, you know, just using your hands around your partner. They are yours. You didn't steal them. Even if you stole them, now they are yours. Use your hands. Another interesting thing about partners that have a great sexual life is that they prioritize 
quickies as much as they prioritize the normal long you know planned sex now our married couples but dear please sex is not just if just for the bed it is not for laying your pillow and you enter that bed you can have it in the car you're legally married the state knows the church knows your parents know steal those quickies as often as you can find your partner in the bathroom and get the deed done you know and you know just get out let, let them finish up their shower okay but we just have this rigidity where we think there is a certain time and place for these actions and sometimes that makes the thing monotonous it gets it makes it boring you're not having a, a different experience to look out for and it's very important for you to you know Put yourself in that kind of way. You're spontaneous. Anything can happen at any time. You're exciting. You're excited. You're just having the time of your life. We're almost done. But these last two points are actually very important. Okay? And one of them is that you need to talk about your feelings and resolve any conflict whatsoever if you're going to have a great sex life. Let me tell you emotions feelings sex that's here it's all here it's all in the head all of it and so if you're not in the right frame of mind if you're in silent treatment you're not talking to each other you have grudges that you're holding on for a very long time and everything your sex life cannot be great it might be regular you might be getting your freak on but it won't be great because every time you know you're trying to enjoy then you remember oh he cheated your body goes into protect mode okay or she's she's abusive she's she's manipulative you just be like let me finish 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 i come and i sleep so you're not really enjoying you're just doing it for doing you're not enjoying you need to get to a place where your emotions are right and that goes without say to our last point your spiritual lives must also be alive to the beginning at the beginning we say that god is the author of sex he wants you to have a good and exciting sexual life so if you're having issues why not take it up with him take it up with management be like god this man you gave me i don't understand he's not functioning the way he should god this woman you gave me she's dry i don't understand why i am mining dry rocks every single time like take it up okay understand God will give you the wisdom for, by the way, anything and everything. God will give you the wisdom and be like, I think you need a checkup. Maybe you have an infection that has been, you know, drilling your body for a while and you're not even noticing it. God will give you the wisdom on what to eat, what to drink, what supplements to take, how to basically elevate everything. Let us not underestimate the power of God and his value in every single aspect of our lives. God 100% has the ability to improve your sexual life if you give it to him. Sex is not a sin if you're married. It's not something you're doing out of shame or guilt whatsoever. So take it up with management. Well, I hope that this particular episode has been amazing for you as it has been for me. Let me know in the comment section. And I know that I'll see you next time. I love you so much. Bye.